Hey there, everybody. Travis, happy to be here. <clears throat> hope everyone had a good day today and uh, hope everyone's been uh, staying safe and keeping healthy out there and hopefully getting on the water some. I'm out here in California. We've been lucky to be able to get on a few of the waterways. They've closed a lot of it down, but uh, the California Delta's still been open. So we've been able to get out there and play some lately. So, you know, you got to get your, get out on the water to get a little bit of that therapy, you know. So hope everyone's doing well. Um, like I said, I hope everyone and their family is doing well through these crazy times and looking forward to getting back on the water. And if you're a tournament fisherman, looking back to, looking forward to getting back in the swing of things. All right, guys, it's getting about five o'clock here. I'm going to let a couple of the last minute uh, attendees jump on and we'll get this webinar started. So we'll take a minute here or two and let the guys rushing in from work uh, out here in California. It's about it's about five o'clock. Um, I know some of you guys back east and in other locations, it's a little bit later in the evening. You guys have been had some time to get in and uh, settle down or get some dinner and relax a little bit before this webinar. So hope you guys all uh, pick up a thing or two from this. Um, I'm going to start from the beginning with this and kind of go from the basics into more of advanced stuff because you know there's a wide range of um, anglers out there and uh, even guys that are wanting to watch this for learning the sonar chart information and everything else just how to read read the detail of these contours and the overlays and uh, all the great information avionics has so i'm going to kind of go from the basics from the mobile app into how we really use it when it comes to game day so, all right, guys, it is 5.02, and we got a good group of people here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the PowerPoint presentation here, and then in the end, I'll go through some question and answers, and also, I will have my email available. If you have any other questions or any, any fishing-related questions, anything like that, feel free to shoot me an email, and I'll... Give the best, do my best to answer whatever questions you got, or even if you want to chat fishing. I love talking about fishing, so it's uh, one of those things. Feel free anytime, shoot me an email and we can chat. So let's get into this here. All right, guys, <clears throat> a little bit about myself. My name is Travis Huckabee. Um, I started out in bass fishing, uh, competitive bass fishing in 2007. I fished the Future Pro Tour. And uh, that's where I got my start, and even my start with Navionics. It was it was very cool. Uh, I was a semi-pro organization, and Navionics uh, was a big sponsor of Future Pro Tour, and still is to this day. And um, they had this thing called the Navionics Cup Challenge, and it was cool. If you had, were the highest ranking, it was almost like a points race. So throughout the season, the highest finisher that was um, in the Navionics Cup Challenge, one for the following years, the um, entries paid for the next season. And it was pretty cool. I ended up um, in 2009, I believe it was, I won the Navionics Cup Challenge and uh, went on to the next year, won it again two years back to back, and it was pretty cool. I just got my foot in the door with Navionics from there and kept going. And it's been, shoot, we've had a good run here of about 10 years. So been very grateful for everything Navionics does and their awesome product. It's one of those things I don't leave home without it, especially, you know, especially when I'm traveling to new waters. So went from Future Pro Tour guys to the FLW Costa Series out here on the West Coast. Uh, done great out there, uh, cut some good checks, qualified for the championships, all that good stuff. And this year I'm fishing the Wild West Bass Trail out here. Um, it's been a good year so far. I just came off of a good event on New Malonis Reservoir, finished fourth place. Uh, was really, really excited. It's always fun when you get to fish with the top 10 on the final day. So uh, things have been going good. Things have been going real good. Uh, and uh, a few of my sponsors, I reckon, like I've already mentioned, Navionics, Hummingbird, Minn Kota, Mercury, Phoenix Rods, CNC Marine, Eco Pro Tungsten, Sims. Lose Reels, River to Sea USA, Ram Trucks is to name a few if I left out some. Uh, you can see some detail on the jersey there or anything like that. But uh, 
those are those are a lot of the big push and uh, the guys that I am beyond grateful for uh, in the fishing game. So that's just a little bit about myself, guys. Like I said, I've been fishing tournament stuff for about 13 years now. So I've got a little bit of little bit of seasons, you know, a few seasons under my belt. So all right, guys, let's let's get into this. Okay, the, one of the main things <clears throat> what we're getting into tonight. A lot of the information is on the Navionics mobile app, guys. The Navionics mobile app, if you have it, it it is an amazing app. There's so much great information in it. It's 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 just mind blowing all the information they've got wrapped in one app, and especially for the price, guys. And also, just a heads up, this the Navionics app. You can load it to your phone or your tablets. You know, if you have an Apple, you got your iPhone and your and your iPad, or if you have like an Android, you can run your Samsung tablet or your um, your Android-based phone. And the app is is compatible with both of those. So it's a great a great thing to have. And the cool thing about it now, guys, is whenever you purchase the app, if you do it under the same account, you could load it on your phone and also load it on your tablet for one fee so there's not two separate fees anymore anything like that you could load it on multiple devices as long as they're under the same account so it's one of those deals i've got it on my phone i've got it on my tablet and then it's like i take it everywhere you know if i got an event coming up i'm at lunch you know lunchtime at work or something i'm looking seeing what's going on on the app checking out new water for the upcoming tournament or my tablet I'm on it in the evening, especially if I'm traveling. I'm in the hotel room. I'm, I'm on the Navionics app on my tablet. So it, you can take it anywhere. And guys, it's an awesome, a very awesome thing to have, especially I got a lot of guys that are using the tablet. You know, you can get your 12-inch screen off your tablet, and they're actually using a RAM mount and mounting them on their boat for like a, another unit, you know. and if you have a tablet laying around the house, you put like a life proof case on it, mount it on the boat, and you can take it, you know, take it on and off the boat. You don't have to really store it on the boat. You can take it out there, clamp it in the mount, and go fishing. And it's awesome, guys. Guys are using those that you can use all the awesome features of the mobile app right there on the boat and go for it. It's 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 awesome, awesome deal. And like I said, it's really cost effective. If you have that tablet laying around, hey, you're in. You know, $14.99 or $19.99 for the app, depending on if you got an Android or or you know Apple. But very cheap for all the information you get, and it's a one-year subscription. So, like I said, guys, take a look at it. Especially you guys on the kayaks, you might have a mount for your phone. You can run the app on your phone and have it out on the kayak. It's it's a win-win. It's a lot of great information, and you can take it anywhere. So we've touched base on the mobile app. This is the boating marine and lakes. This is a, a link that I or um, a picture I took right off of the one that I use. As you can see, it says open. So that came right off of my phone. So a lot of guys will oh I'll get emails regarding which one do they need because there is a quite a few different ones depending on your location. So this one covers pretty much the United States, Canada. It has a lot of coverage. And then there's also ones where you can get like the Caribbean, stuff like that, where I get guys that'll email me that's going on a vacation. So they'll load different ones for different, you know, different vacations they're going on, great fishing adventures and all the good stuff. So it's really, really cheap. It's a year subscription. And guys, like I said, there's so much awesome information that I'm going to start talking to you about now that's loaded on this app that's just mind-blowing okay guys if you have the app here is one of the ways to navigate through the app as far as getting to your overlays because the main topic at tonight is the overlays because the overlays we're just going to pretty much make it simple the overlays are what brings the detail so to get to your overlays, guys, whenever you get in, you'll hit your, your Navionics app icon. It'll open up, 
and it'll bring you probably right to the location where you're at. You're either gonna be at the water or even right now you could be, you'll be at your house. It'll bring up a little triangle. That'll be your GPS location. It'll show all that. Now, two ways guys to get into, has, uh, to get into your overlays here. One of the quick ways is if you see on the, it would be the bottom left corner, you got a waypoint. It looks like a pin. Then you have, looks like diamonds, which that is the symbol for layers. And then you have the triangle, which is the, the GPS, the GPS locator. Now the diamonds represent the layers, guys. You can do just a quick tap on that and it'll bring up your layer information. Or you go in, you can hit menu here. You see the big green start at the bottom, the menu button on the right hand side of the start, you press that. And it'll bring up this page here that you see to the right hand view that has markers, favorites, chart upgrades, download maps, updates, deletes. You get where I'm going. Now, on something like with this, guys, if you already have the Navionics mobile app, you are definitely wanting, you're going to want to update your map because on this, with the newest feature, the sonar chart shading. You have to update it and it will bring the new feature in. The, the update's been available for about a month now. So if you haven't, I always make sure I just update my maps. I update my maps probably every other week. I just stay on top of it. The mobile app, it's free. If you got your one year subscription, it's free to update your maps. So there's no extra hidden fees or anything. You can just hit update maps and it'll tell you your maps are old or your, your maps are outdated. You can hit that and it only takes a shoot of about a minute or two and it'll update your mapping. And also, like I said, if you have a the mobile app loaded on your phone or tablet and you update it now, it'll bring in the new overlay features. That's a huge key. So be sure to update your app and it'll bring in the features that you're gonna see today. So also guys, you got great things like weather and tides on this, but the way to get, I don't want to get off track, the way to get back, I told you guys about the layer, the diamonds over there on the left-hand bottom corner, is a quick way to get to your layers and overlays. Now, also, on this right-hand side, you've got map options. It shows pretty much that same symbol of the layers. So you're going to click map options, and it'll take you in to the same screen for map options that the the opposite hand there on the left would take you to as well. Let's get into that. This is what you'll see, guys. This is the advanced advanced map options. Don't let the advanced throw you off. Um, map options is map options. That's where it takes you. Now, I'm going to get into the chart layers. I'm going to kind of run through them. You got here, the first one we'll talk about. It's the bare minimum. Pretty much shows you the, the profile of the lake. It's pretty much, you know, the government chart is just the perimeter of the lake, just a blue, blue pond looking deal. It's just very basic, not no contours, nothing at all. Let's get into that. Okay. We got the, the government charts, like I said, very basic minimum. Next one, guys, is nautical charts. This one is where it gets tricky. This guy's it looks good. There's detail to it. You got your depth contours and everything, but your depth contours are spread apart. They're five feet increments, 10 feet increments. They're a little more spread apart. This is a, 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 a good chart, but it's it's not as not as defined as a lot of anglers would like. So a, a nautical chart would be if you're a sailing or something like that, where you know, tighter tighter increments isn't very critical. You just want to know, ah, oh, we got five to ten feet, you know, contours out here, no big deal. Hey, nautical charts be the way to go. But now, whenever you want to get into fine tuning um, what's going on underneath you as far as the contouring goes, it's the next one, the sonar chart layer, guys. This one here is the one that I run constantly. This one is one of the deals that has it has one foot high definition contours, and 
the awesomest thing about it, guys, is there's a lot of people out there that do the sonar, um, a lot of the sonar logging or like the, the live recordings. And now whenever they upload that data, guys, the sonar chart information will show the areas with the newest, latest, and greatest contour recordings. And, and in a one foot uh, one foot definition, so you'll re, you can really see when areas change, and I'm going to get to that. But uh, I'm just touching on the basics. This sonar chart layer is really a key to helping catch more fish because, guys, there's times out here, especially on the California Delta, you'll have a bank that's three feet deep. You know, this whole little channel is three to four feet deep, and it'll have like a little washout in it where some water come in or something you know something eroded through and all of a sudden there's just like a two foot drop it goes from three to five feet a little little canal that's cut in there and guys these largemouth bass out here they tuck right in on that little two foot break and will sit there and it's a huge key i use it a lot out here um guys in florida i know use the technique um, a lot of guys that like to fish grass punching you got a heavy weight flip into these fish you got grass and now here guys a lot of guys all you could see is hyacinth or the big grass flats you know big grass canopies over the top of the water so i really rely on my navionic sonar chart layer to let me know what's going on on that bank because if it's just a three foot bank you know three foot deep bank i want to fish the subtleties if there's a little ledge that's where the fish are going to hide you know if there's some rocks on it that's where a fish would be. So whenever you get in this thing, you want to find the subtlety. So a little, a little two foot, one foot even contour break, those fish will sit on it. So once you have that, that big canopy of grass or the hyacinth, instead of going down and spending an hour flipping and punching that grass down that whole bank until you stumble across that one pitch that lands perfectly and falls right next to that ledge and that big one eats it you wouldn't know you know it's like poking a needle in a haystack but whenever you have the sonar chart layer with the one foot contours you will be looking at it and, oh wow there's a little little creek indentation there or a little little ledge there there's there's something there that those fish are going to really key on so instead of fishing that whole 100 yard stretch i fly over into that area and it'll fish that 10 yard stretch and just kind of pick it apart and use my my navionics sonar chart overlay to let me know what's going on under that grass so that's a huge huge key factor guys and i mean shoot you don't even need you know the grass and everything i was just giving you a great example of on shallow water you know florida fishing out here california delta fishing fishing that grass seeing those contours you know it really helps you pick it apart and then you go out to a lake, the same thing, guys. It could be a deeper water. You could be out in 24, 25 feet of water, have a little three foot, three foot drop off where a creek channel swing goes, and all of a sudden those fish are just stacked on it. It really helps you define the the what's going on with the contours and lets you know in a in a tighter increment. Because guys, if you know if that was spread out on a five foot increment, you wouldn't see the the two, three foot depth change that held those fish there. It would just be a pretty much a five foot, you know, a big span there of all five foot until it broke five foot, then they'd have another contour on it. So having the sonar chart layer with the one foot high definition contours is definitely a way to really define what you're fishing for. All right, guys, like I was talking here, I'm just doing a quick comparison to show you guys. The left screen, the blue, is the US government layer. And now, like I said, guys, this is the same exact area in the two images you're looking at. The, the government layer is very, very basic, just uh, pretty much, like I said, shoreline of the lake. And then the next one next to it is nautical charts. This is, like I said, guys, see how you got 35, 75, 120, 140, 280, 160. Those are like in five foot increments, like I said. So it's not the high definition. So nautical chart layers, if you're not really into using a fine tooth comb to try to figure out an area you're fishing, nautical chart could be the way to go. So 
you know, that's up to your discretion and uh, it's it's available. So, and like I said, it's all the push of a button. It's on the same app here. There's no nothing extra to it. You just select nautical chart layer and you're good to go. So let's go on to the next. This is what I was talking about when you really get into you want the fine line detail. And uh, guys, this is this is what it's about, you know, in the in the bass fishing world. It's it's the subtleties, you know. A lot of anglers that are, you know, when you're especially competing and everything, you got a lot of great anglers you're up against. So tools like Navionics and stuff like this, the great products we have, you got to use them to your advantage. And it's one of those deals. You got the nautical charts here on the left, the sonar chart layer on the right. You can see on here, guys, see how the, the, the contours are so much more defined and also really helps you understand what's going on in the area. Because over here on the left on the nautical chart it's the lines are pretty much all spread then you go over here to the right and you see how they're darker in certain regions all right guys the darkness is something that really helps you key in on it what the darkness is is it's more lines guys they're closer together so whenever you have the lines closer together that means the contour is more abrupt it's a deeper water a, a transition, an abrupt transition. You'll have a deep, a dark highlighted lines because all the lines are staggered. And then when it's shallower, a tapering, all your contours are going to be spread apart. So you can see on the on the right hand picture there, the sonar chart layer, there's a good ridge that comes off of that that point there, and especially on the island, right there to the right hand side, you got the point that comes off of it, and then you even have a long tapering point. To the left there on that same image here that goes out and you can see how there's really no contours on it now the thing about that is that's just a big flat you know a point extending out that's the same depth just a big flat off of it now all the other ones with the tighter black highlight you know the more bold black you know there's a, a good good break in there you know it's a, an abrupt contour change so that's one of the deals that i really use to key in on really fine tuning an area and understanding what's going on because you guys know you could pull up on a point and a lot of points out here guys they'll go out nice tapering point one side will have a nice steady like just a nice tapering side and another side usually it'll be a little steeper like from a creek channel bend or something so you know the fish are going to be up on top of the point they'll be roaming up top or they can sit off on the deeper edge or depending on the sun shadow they'll be or the sun they'll be sitting on the, the deeper break side where the shadow's at so it really kind of helps you by even looking at your mapping and what's going on with a certain area you're in even helps you with boat positioning on how you want to approach fishing that point because you know if you pull the boat up to one side of it you're you know that the break you're on the break side by watching your graph or your tablet you make that cast up there and pull that bait off to the steeper side or if you like to crank or throw swim baits you can kind of set the boat into position to make the right cast for the area especially like with me i like throwing swim baits and jigs and uh, I like to position the boat up tight and throw the bait and bring it uphill. Those fish, I, I've, I've just really, that's just one of my key things, guys, my bait position, uh, my boat positioning is to locate where the steeper bank, the steeper structure on the area I'm fishing is. And I like to put the boat in shallow water, throw out deep and bring it uphill. And uh, it's got some good bites for me. So knowing what you're up against, using the sonar chart layer really defines it and helps you figure out what you're up against. All right, guys, I touched base earlier about the recordings, guys doing sonar logging and, you know, the, the live, um, live mapping and stuff, recording, doing your own, you know, doing your own live mapping. This is a, this is exactly why with, with I have, well, this is the same exact area. And the map on the left 
is the nautical chart map. Now, you can see it, it shows this waterway. What this was was a community they built on the water. And it was dug out and it was a big housing project they were getting ready to build. And this turned into a big hot spot, especially this time of the year for the spawn, stuff like that. It turned into it like its own little lake. And these fish would move in on the California Delta, move into there, and they would spawn. And it was just, uh, just a, it turned into a, a hot spot. And now, guys, like I said, with the people that record with the sonar, uh, sonar logging and the, and the live logging, I actually did this area myself, so it was pretty cool. I did all the recording in here. It was just blank, as you see on the left, and it took me about a day and a half, and I did the whole thing, mapped it all. I recorded it all, and now whenever you use the sonar chart layer, it shows all the new recorded areas. So if you brought this area up right now on, on a brand new app on your phone that you just loaded today, you could go in and hit the nautical chart and you'll see the left view and you could hit the sonar chart layer and it'll bring up the right view. And that's one of the key features, guys, is there's, there's so much editing that goes on. There is a lot of guys, I know a lot of bass anglers and everybody is real uh, top secret and they don't like to do a lot of the live recording. But uh, it's one of those things, guys. I mean, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, let you know, hey, Travis Huckabee was in this area. You know, nothing like that. It just, all it does is records the what the contours the boat's going over. So when I'm on the water, my boat's constantly recording. I could be in a big tournament or out fishing with my son, and we have the boat recording on all these waterways. So what's cool about it is, is there's so many people doing it, guys. Whenever, that's what, with everyone doing it, one of the main cool things about it is, is when you run the sonar chart layer, you get the latest and greatest information. So it shows you all the newest stuff. And that's why I, I will update my charts every two weeks on the mobile app. And then even on my Navionics card, I'll update that thing every three weeks to a month. And especially if I have events coming up, I'm, I'm updating. Because all that sonar chart information is the newest, latest, and greatest in the high definition. And it comes from everyone who's recording. All the information goes to Navionics and they update it. So that's why it's real, real, uh, really good to update your maps to have the newest information available. So that right there, guys, is a huge, huge key to finding exactly like what I use this, uh, the layer for, the sonar chart layer, is to get the, like I said, the newest and latest information that's been recorded. So many people are out on the water doing this. You always want the newest and latest and greatest. So that's a huge key to helping me catch more fish using that layer. Okay, guys, I'm gonna touch bases on overlays here. This is another factor of what I fine tune, what I pick on to, especially this is the layers of what I really look into when I'm getting ready for an event. Um, or getting ready for a day's fishing, I kind of know what's going on as far as the seasonal pattern, um, my weather, what's going on, uh, stuff like that. But if I'm looking to fish a new waterway, like for instance, uh, beginning of the year, we have a tournament on Lake Shasta every year. Uh, one of the circuits uh, we fish starts on Lake Shasta and it's kind of neat. Some of these overlays really helps you understand what's going on around the lake. So overlay, here we have, this is just no overlay. And you'll see on the option, it says no overlay. And you have three different ones, or four actually different ones. You got the no overlay, you got terrain overlay, you have satellite overlay, and then sonar chart shading, which is the newest, latest, and greatest that thing from Navionics we're gonna touch on as well. So this right here, guys, is no overlay. Real plain, shows the lake with all the contours. So on the water, this is a this is you know, this right here will get you the information, the contours you're going over with the boat, all that good stuff. So next one, terrain overlay. This here, guys, the terrain overlay and satellite satellite overlay is awesome. This is where we get into the 3D view. 
So on this, it starts getting into 3Ds. You can even see some of the, on some of this here, you can see roadways, you can see um, old railroad, uh, railroad tracks, stuff like that. It, it's, it's a good feature, kind of helps you understand what's going on around the lake. And it's like, whenever you understand the geographical features around the lake leading into the water, you kind of start understanding kind of the lay of the lake. You know, it's like out here, a lot of our lakes and the mother load are all deep. Um, I know guys back east, uh, you know, we chat and I got a lot of good friends from back east and everything. And we talk about them laughing as, hey, yeah, we, we had to fish deep today. We we're, you know, spooning in 60, 70 feet of water. And they're just like, that's unfathomable. They're like deep over the, over, you know, where we're fishing is 18 feet, 12 feet. Heck, I got one buddy that calls anything over eight feet deep. But uh, over here, guys, a lot of deep, uh, deep lakes. So all of it, a lot, a lot of the lakes up here are up in the mountains. So with mountains, you got a lot of stuff that kind of feeds into it as far as river inlets, um, river exits, you know, by the dams. You got spillways, stuff like that, where these terrain overlays will help kind of key in on what's going on with the lake and how the lake sets up and now here's another one guys this is the what the one that i use the most this is the satellite overlay this one is awesome guys you can zoom in on this it shows you streets it shows you road names the whole nine this is like a three it's uh like it's the satellite overlay from bing so it's almost like a you know, the earth views that you can zoom in and see your house and stuff like that. You could see the regions really, really good. So this is a great view here, guys. Note, satellite overlay is an overlay that I like to use that shows me a lot of backwater. This, it shows kind of, shows the little, little backwater eddies, you know, the little backwater fingers that, you know, is off the beaten path. You can start looking at a lake, zooming it in, and start figuring out some backwater stuff and uh, a lot of the less pressured stuff. And guys, you'd be surprised. We got you know some places back you know over here that, especially like on the delta, you can get running down in some of the little sloughs and stuff like that that has little offshoots and stuff that on high tide that it floods into a pond and then exits out on low tide and it just builds you know feeding feeding tunnels there where whenever that pond exits out those fish just stage right there to feed on everything flowing out because the tide's dropping out so the satellite overlay view guys is what i use a uh, hundred percent of the time when i'm looking around for really doing my scouting and especially this view here i touch base with you guys about lake shasta Lake Shasta is a it's a big waterway. Uh, it has some big river arms, and it's up in the hills as well in Northern California. We fished that tournament in January, late January, early February, and guys, this this view right here is awesome because you can zoom in, and if we get rain, a lot of the it's a spotted bass factory. Um, the Shasta is, and a lot of times, guys, if we get the rain and that incoming water. You start looking for the feeder creeks, and this this satellite overlay, you can really, really zoom in. You know, it'll show you the difference between two ridges coming together or an actual creek that comes in. So this right here, you can sit back the night before, zoom in, and you actually know, oh, man, that's a creek, that's a feeder creek coming in, in the, in the back of that cove, or it's just a cove that comes together. You know, two you know two mountain ridges that you know come together and make the make the scene but or on it like i said this will define if it has a feeder creek to it so it's a great feature shows you all the feeder creeks shows you back water all the good stuff and heck guys i even used this one time i got down here in the delta and ran some back water and we had to go over a levee and it ended up being the levee area that we went over. The water dropped out and we couldn't get the boat back over the levee and had to wait for high tide before we could get the boat out. So I got on my app here and was looking around and I actually found that there was a, a an area down about half a mile from where we were at that had a little private ramp. There was a little camping area. 
So we idled back down there and it was hilarious. We, I dropped one of my good friends off there and he got a ride, made a call, got a ride from a buddy of mine and got, went back and got the truck at the, it was at the other, other marina and brought that truck in and we put the boat back on the thing. We weren't stuck there all night waiting for the tide to come back in. So it has some great features, guys. Like I said, shows the, the backwater, um, the roads. We could see where we were at in the roads that went over to there whenever we made the call. Hey, bud, we need you to bail us out. We need a ride to go get our truck so we can get the boat out. And uh, showed us all the road names. We told them, hey, you're going to come up this road and take a left, you know, on Bonds Flat Road. And uh, we're right down here coming out, come on down by the campgrounds. And then it made it, you know, made it happen. So it's a great feature, guys. Like I said, even for even for a road map, if there's any emergency or anything like that. So satellite overlay, like I said, it's it's a live real time view. So it's an awesome feature. All right, guys. Now we're gonna get into the fancy stuff. This is this is neat. This right here makes navigating waterways a breeze. Now this is the new sonar chart shading. This one, guys. This is the view I mentioned earlier about needing to make sure you update your app. If you already have an app, you need to update it so it now has this feature. Or if you load the app now, it will be on there. So this feature here is the new latest and greatest, guys. It's all about shading, the depth shading. So the light blue you see is shallow water. The dark blue you see is deeper water. Now, this is an area on the California Delta that I had just had to, had to put on here because when you're out running around on the California Delta, the main, it's got a main channel that runs from the ocean out in San Francisco to the port of Stockton all the way in. It's, it's quite a ways. And now a lot of the deep water there is 20 feet, 25 feet for the big freight trucks or freight ships to come in hauling cargo. So there is a, a nice, as you can see here, the dark blue um, deep water channel. Um, that's really pronounced. Now, if you guys can see, you got the in the center there, the green icon there, showing that's kind of the safety thing and the safety buoys on kind of marking the channel, the the channel way. Now that right there, guys, where the green one, the green um, buoy is, on the north side of that buoy is a sandbar, and that is a serious sandbar right there. With, with when it the tide drops out, that is in about six inches of the water. And on a bad day, whenever the tide really goes in the minus direction, you'll actually it'll actually show itself. So it's it's crazy on that one because you'll have six inches of the water, and right there it'll fall off from six inches to 18 to 20, just whoo, a crazy just break right there, a big channel swing. But with this new sonar chart shading, it makes it a breeze. You zoom in on that, keep your little triangle, which was gonna, would be you in the boat, doing your, uh, you know, doing your GPS, running along. Keep that little, keep your GPS triangle in that dark blue water, and you know you're good to go. You can, you can make a beeline to wherever you need to go. Just keep it in the dark blue. All the light blue around it, guys, like I said, that's the, in that specific area, that big break in that sandbar, that's all just a couple feet of water. So having that sonar chart shading in the delta and any any new lake you're trying to venture out to is a is an awesome feature to navigate and and uh, feel safe navigating around, especially the shallow water areas. All right, I touch base on that. This is an awesome. Also, another awesome feature, the way I use it, is I like this right here would be a a spot within a spot. And uh, I fish this area quite a bit. And with this sonar chart shading, this really helps me break this area down. Because right where you see flooded timber on that view, that right there, guys, there's a creek channel swing, a point. It's actually got two points to it and it's a big flat that comes out. So guys, this thing right here holds fish kind of year round. You got fish, they just hang out in that creek channel on the deep water ledge, 
they'll come up in there when it's ready to spawn spawn on that on that big point that comes out with the two right there with the the big point that comes out that's a flat they'll come up on there and spawn there's wood on that big flat it's just as it just has all the right ingredients so using the sonar uh, the sonar chart shading it really helps you tell the deeper water to the shallow water contour changes just real fast you don't even like i said you don't have to really pay attention to the lines the contour lines nothing you can just tell oh that's a light blue that's shallow that's dark blue i'm safe i can run this or you can position the boat into the dark blue and work your way up into the shallow and that's just a huge key like i said guys here helps you take a look you know helps you really distinct uh, make a quick decision on hey this is a creek channel it's creek channel swings right here uh, there's a point in this specific area uh, we got a shallow spawning cove you can tell by the light blue coming in from dark to the light the light extends out a ways you know that's a nice little shallow spawning cove ledges like i said guys it's going to go from that light blue like you've seen on the delta image i had light blue to a dark blue transition you know where you can run and you know right where the ledge is at also guys the humps it, it'll show a, a submerged hump and a submerged island top uh, really well. The top of the island is going to be a light blue falling into darker blue. It's a it's an awesome feature. It just really helps you helps helps you quickly break down the area. So it's an awesome feature, guys. Key to catching more fish definitely helps. Like I said, break the area down, know what you're up against, and like I said use it to your advantage another feature guys i want to talk that was about the we we just covered the layers and overlays so i'll give you a couple little staples that i jump in the boat or um getting ready for an event on the mobile app i go into menu map options and you can scroll through that scroll down that page and you'll see water level now with the water level guys this is a cool, a, an awesome feature. On the left hand view here, guys, that's a view of the water at full pool. Now, out here in California, guys, we get a lot of water fluctuation. They draw the lakes down to make room for new snow melt. Um, so we have fluctuations from 40 to 60. Some lakes will fall out 80 to 100 feet. It's pretty amazing. But with the app, you can make a quick quick uh, a quick adjustment and pull your water level down it's pretty neat it'll have the zero to negative 100 and then uh, you can even advance it if the water level comes up so you can make the quick adjustments and right here on the right you can see now i pulled it down i believe on that image 25 feet and it shows you the new shoreline and it shows you where the old original shoreline was so it, it it will actually count as far as long as you know the depth that it's falling out it'll actually pull it back that amount of feet and actually adjust the mapping accordingly and a lot of guys will ask me well how do you know exactly how uh how far the water level has dropped guys um what i'll do if i have a big event coming up i'll call um call up to the lake or out here we got the irrigation district or the Army Corps of Engineers that runs a lot of the water that operates the dams, and they'll tell you they're releasing water, how much, and where the water level is at the lake. So they can tell you, okay, the lake level is at 900 feet. And then you can ask them, okay, well, 900, what is your full pool level? And they'll tell you, oh, the full pool is at 918. So you know right there, 918 minus 900, you got 18 foot adjustment, go to your water level, back it up 18 feet, and now your contour, it shrinks down and, and will be spot on with what, what, what that water level is that day. Or what I do a lot of the times when I don't have time, uh, busy, hectic schedule, trying to you know get ready to go for the weekend fishing, getting everything wrapped up around the house with the kids and the job and all that, I don't have time to make a few calls, it slips my mind. I get on the water, turn my graph on, and I'll pull up to an area that's on my that I'm watching on my app, 
and it'll say that I'm in 35 feet of water because it'll show my GPS position and the contour lines. So I'll be at 35. Well, my graph's saying I'm in actually 30. So water level, knock it down five feet. All of a sudden, my 30 matches 30 on the graph. Now I'm running. My water level adjustment is made the right adjustment to the day, you know, for the, the water level for the day. So all you got to do, line up on a depth contour and then set your depth accordingly from the just kind of going from your graph depth to your app. So that's another quick way instead of making phone calls. Uh, but a lot of guys want to know pinpoint. And it's just like, well, the specific way if you want the official is to talk to the you know the waterway the you know the irrigation district all that but with me i don't really fret it i'll jump on the water idle over a hump or across the point and like i said make the adjustment real quick up oh, boats in 32 feet says i should be in 35 or says i should be in 40 i just bring the two together make the level adjustment huge key great you know great Great feature. And this is another feature, guys. We want to talk about catching the fish. Now, you got your overlays and your in your layers. Now, whenever you put all your contours together, you got your views that you want, you're fine-tuned in within feet. You know, you got your, your sonar chart information at one foot depth contours. You can go in and do this also, guys. It's in the same page of map options fishing ranges. Now this is an awesome feature. You have to highlight it. You can see right there fishing ranges on sonar chart. You would toggle the thing on. The fishing range is on. You can see the blue. You got the little button that slid over to the right and has the blue. Now you can set color coordinates. So on this one, that specific day, I was catching fish in 18 to 22 feet on uh, submerged humps. So it was neat. I just went on there, guys, put in strike zone. I set my depth at 18 to 22 feet, color coded it, and went for it. And it's awesome. As soon as you, as soon as you set all that up and you toggle right next to it where it says strike zone there, you got the orange circle with a check mark. All you got to do is touch that circle once you have the depth set right. Touch that. the um, the circle and you'll get the check mark. And as soon as that check mark comes on, you'll see the contours light up. So what it did was specifically highlighted my strike zone in 18 to 22 feet deep of water. So I knew by having that exactly the range I wanted to be fishing in. And guys, it would made it so simple. You can get out there and just keep the boat in that, especially if you're a guy that loves to drag. Oh my goodness, a Carolina rig, pitch it out on the cross, you know, pitch it out there, keep the boat right in that orange band, and just drag along, and boom, you're catching fish left and right. It was a blast. So these features, guys, really helps you put more fish in the boat. You got the water level, uh, water level adjustment, the fishing ranges, and then fine-tuning your map in with your overlays and layers. So I hope that helps you guys. Um, like I said, just using the information that we have available out there these days is just puts you that much ahead of the ahead of the learning curve, guys. Especially in you know competitive fishing, you guys got a lot of guys in the semi-pro and amateur levels that go out and you know they'll just turn the troll motor on high and beat the bank. Understanding what's going on uh, underneath the boat is a huge key to catching these bigger fish. And really, you know, it, th those fish are less pressured. Not everyone there is going down the bank and throwing the spinner bait at that same tree lay down. They're running right across that little creek channel swing that had them stacked, you know. Um, and it's just one of those things, stack the odds in your favor. And I believe with this Navionics mobile app or the Navionics mapping cards, this product, guys, is it really helps you dial in and catch more fish. So, all right, guys, I'm getting about to the end of this deal here where uh, I'll go ahead and take some, some questions and everything. I got my email here, thuckabee at navionics.com, and then also my Facebook page if you'd like to, if 
follow me on Facebook, uh, chat, whatever you need. There's two ways to get a hold of me. And uh, feel free to shoot me any questions, comments, anything you got. Um, like I said, uh, I love fishing and love talking fishing. So hope you guys all enjoyed this. And uh, let me look at the questions here. I got a few people uh, with some questions. Got a lot of great, great comments on here, guys. A lot of great comments. You guys catching crappie and really highlighting the areas in the fishing ranges and catching the slabs and the creek channels. I love hearing that. You know, that stuff is all just, like I said, we're all fishermen here and it's awesome to, awesome to hear how you guys use this and all the, the very positive comments on it. Got some guys from Australia in here this evening. Hello, everybody. Awesome. I'm, that, that's so cool you guys tuned in all the way from Australia. Thank you very much. I appreciate all you guys' time and, and everything. That's so cool. All right, guys. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. I, I love doing these things. It's, it's fun uh, just chatting, fishing, and like I said, hope, hopefully you guys took something from this and uh, can load the boat. So, all right, everybody. It looks like that's about it with the questions. A lot of just all positive stuff and everyone saying hello and they greatly appreciate it. And like I said, guys, I greatly appreciate you guys for tuning in. So with that being said, I'm going to call it a call it an evening. And I uh, hope you guys have a great evening. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night.